everybody, you know who this is. It's your boy Will. And um, I've been away for a couple of weeks, so I've got a lot to talk about in a little bit of time, so let's get to it. First things first, Donald Trump. I told you Donald Trump was a plan. I told you Donald Trump was not seriously running for the presidency, and boom, he drops out. I told you that the reason why I say he was a plant is because, look at it, 30 years entrepreneurship, dozens of businesses that he's run, he's a billionaire, and I mean, in this economy, in this Obama, Obama economy that is absolutely horrendous, and the one thing you want to talk about is Obama's birth certificate. The one lightning rod subject that was guaranteed to bring back the black and Latino vote. Because Obama had lost 15 points with African Americans and over 20 points with Latinos. So they had to figure out something to bring those votes back. It wasn't going to be the economy. It wasn't going to be foreign policy. So what you had to do? Play the race card. And that's what Donald Trump was. He was their race card. I mean, how perfect was it that he was a white, male, so-called Republican with money? I mean, rich white male says Republican, that whole stereotypical Republican, and they got the loudest, most obnoxious one they can find in Donald Trump to put forth the message that evil white men want to destroy black people. Evil white men want to cage and destroy Latinos. I mean, it was perfect. And the press fell for it, and half of America fell for it, and Republicans fell for it. I mean, come on, 20 points in a poll for Donald Trump. I saw through that like a window. I knew he wasn't running. So go back and watch my video, and I hope you put on my comments how <laughs> amazingly pre and my predictions are and how I'm right. I can't help it, people. I'm not, I, I'm, I just know this stuff. Number two, Paul Ryan and Newt Gingrich. If you don't know who Paul Ryan is, Paul Ryan is a representative from Wisconsin who put forth a plan to try to balance the budget, cut the deficit, and cut the debt. And what he had to do is do something that very few politicians have the courage to do, and that's talk about entitlement. He wanted to try to curb Medicare and change the way we do it so it could be sustainable for the future. But the Democrats, of course, is talking about how, oh, we're going to have old people dying in the street, and we're going to take them with wheelbarrows and, and put the bodies in the wheelbarrow and throw them in the trash. And, and, and that's what they're trying to do, scare. But the Democrats have absolutely no plan. Fast forward to last week. I mean, rewind to last week. Newt Gingrich on Meet the Press. He calls it right-wing social engineering. And the press has a field day with it. Republicans pounce all over him. Me, personally, I think he has a right to his own opinion. The man never had a chance to be president in the first place. So Newt Gingrich's only um, role to play in this whole process was to be the intellectual. And I guess... Him doing what he did kind of showed that intellectually he's bright, but politically he's kind of stupid. And that was just really dumb. The cut, in the, the cut out the knees, the one guy who's trying to do something to help this country get rid of its debt, help us balance budgets, and cut our deficit. That was kind of stupid. Number three, Mitch Daniels. I ain't going to lie. I was so hoping Mitch Daniels would run for office. But he decided that he said, I love my country, but I love my family more. That's the headline from the Indianapolis Star. And he pretty much would have been the nail in the coffin to the Obama administration because the guy has balanced budgets in Indiana, and he also may not be the coolest looking guy, but he's the most astute when it comes to the economy, and he just has this certain piece of gravitas that he has that would have been beneficial to the party and to the, the nomination process. And if he would have got the nomination, he would have absolutely crushed Obama in debate. But, hey, you know, so, I mean, you got to do what you got to do for family. So love for family, love for country, sometimes they do conflict. So my best to Miss Daniels, but I wish he would have ran. So that kind of leaves us with a kind of a an up in the air, John Huntsman may be coming in. You got, uh, you got New Gingrich, Sarah Palin, and oh God, please don't let Sarah Palin run. Her negativities are in the high 60s, 70s. She cannot win. People who so do not put that woman on the ballot anywhere. Um, Michelle Bachman, uh, you got Santorum, Herman Cain. Now Herman Cain is funny. Like that guy, he's absolutely funny, but he's our Al Sharpton. He's the conservative Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton didn't have a chance in hell of winning on the Democratic side. And actually, Herman Cain, you know, you're funny, you got great lines, but dude, you just don't really get it. I mean, maybe you might show me something different, but for right now, I don't think you got the gravitas for it. Um, you got Rick Santorum. So honestly, people, the the the, the field looks kind of weak. 
I mean, because each one of these people that I just mentioned, they all play to a certain part of the Republican Party conservative movement, but they don't appeal to the Republican or conservative movement as a whole. And we need somebody who's going to appeal to Americans as a whole, somebody who can keep to conservative values, but yet still have the warmth and compassion to show Americans that we're not just the, the party of evil, destructive people who want to kill old people and put children out on the streets. So we need somebody who's going to be able to bring that to the national stage, that conservatism is compassionatism. I mean, compassionate. And, you know, yeah, we had compassionate conservative with George W. Bush, but don't even get me started on that bastard. I mean, it was, that was just a catchphrase. Number four, the thing that the Democrats are going to run on for Obama right now is going to be steady leadership in a time of change. They're going to run just like George W. Bush did in 2004 by saying you don't want to change ships in midstream. That's what they're going to tell you. You don't want to change the coach in the middle of the game. That's what they're going to tell you. That, yeah, I suck as president. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But guess what? Things will get better if you give me a second term to jack stuff up again. So do we really want to do that? Do we really want to give Obama a second chance to keep effing stuff up? Hell no. But that's what they're going to run on, that they're hoping to scare you, saying, hey, we are starting to see things happen in the, Denver, uh, in the economy. I mean, jobs are coming back slowly but surely, and the, and the stimulus package is working, and they're going to tell you you don't want to change now because if you do, we're just going to have to start all over again. And that's what Bush said in 2004 when the economy was kind of tanking. And he said, you don't want to change while we're in the middle of a war, and you don't want to change because the policies that I'm putting forth are going to help. They're starting to help. You don't want to get in the middle of all of that. Don't fall for that again, American people, because it's BS. It's total BS. Obama ran on hope the first time, but now he has to actually run on his record, something he's never had to do in his entire political career. So we, make, we want to make sure that we hold him accountable. This is not going to be about the Republican candidate. This is going to be about a referendum on Obama's performance. And right now, we've got to give him a D minus. The only reason I don't give him an F, because on his watch, at least our military performed and got Osama of bin Laden. But that's all I can give him. Everything else sucks. He sucks. So anyway, people, there you go. That's a whole bunch of stuff and a whole little, a little bit about a time, about eight minutes right now, so close to eight minutes. So um, thank you for watching my videos. Much love, and uh, I will talk to you guys a little later. i got another video coming up with some other stuff I want to talk about, but I don't want to give you too much to digest in uh, a little bit of time. So God bless, and talk to you later. Peace.